Hello, welcome to Lil's Vintage World. So this video is another one of my history book reviews where I take three history books and review them for you. As usual, all of these books will be linked in the description bar below. They were all kindly sent to me from Unblue Publishing, so thank you very much for them to send me them. And yeah, let's just get straight into it. So the first book that I have to share with you is 1940s Fashion by Fiona Kay, a Neil Art story. This book is part of the Britain's Heritage uh, series that's come out with Amberley. It's only um, a short book, it's just over 60 pages, but it's a fab little introductory book into 1940s fashion. Now, I love vintage fashion and I get asked quite a few times books and recommendations to get into the history of fashion. I am going to be doing a whole little series on that, but this book would be a great book to pick up if you're interested in learning about 1940s fashion. It's a fantastic introductory book. This book, as well as being historical and looking at certain fashions, etc., it's also quite sociological, so it looks at the aspect of why certain fashions are worn, the practicality behind them, as well as the fact that, oh, it's just in fashion. But it's also, we've got to remember, 1940s were a time where we were at war, and then recovering from war. So there are certain reasons why we wore certain fashions. This book covers fashions on like weddings and rationing and uniforms and CC for one clothing. And throughout the book, as you can see if I flick through it, there are quite a few pictures and includes quite a few um, examples of those different things. I mean, some of the pictures are just seriously beautiful. So as I said, if you really want to get into learning about the history of fashion, this is a fab little book to pick up and you'll read it in one sitting and then you'll have to reread it again because that's what I did. <laughs> I read it twice over. I really enjoyed it. The next book that I have to share with you is Dresses and Dressmaking from the Late Georgians to the Edwardians by Pam. Is it Einder or Inder? I'm not quite sure. Uh, this book focuses on the dressmaking side to historical fashion of this period, which I'm going to be honest is quite unusual. There aren't too many books that do this. This is a book that looks at fashion but also the dressmaking side of it. So this book discusses things like the working conditions of working in dressmaking, the technical, technological, get my words out, uh, technological advancements in the ability to make these beautiful dresses. Throughout the book, as you can imagine, there are quite a lot of images. Uh, some of the images I really enjoyed were like as well as the beautiful examples were the punch cartoons where it kind of takes the mick out of the ridiculous fashions. These were absolutely brilliant and I'm so glad they were put in the book. But my favourite chapter um, was called Dresses and the People That Wore Them where we looked at some individual women and we actually got to have a little peek inside their wardrobes to uh, check out the type of thing that they were purchasing and you can imagine these are some really grand ladies. So if you're interested in the history of fashion, particularly on the dressmaking front, then you'll really like this book. And finally, I have Lady M, The Life and Loves of Elizabeth Lamb by Countess of Melbourne, 1751 to 1818 by Colin Brown. So this book is a full length biography about this woman, Lady M. It's about her family and it's also about her social circle. So it's not just plain focus on her, it's plain focus on her and those around her. Lady M was someone who was full of scandal. She kind of, she did the unwritten rule um, in the Georgian era where if you have provided your husband with um, an heir, you can, if discreetly, have affairs with people that you want to have affairs with. Um, I did a book review on uh, Francis Fuller's Countess of Jersey. I love that book, that was so good. Um, I'll leave the review for you up top. But uh, she did the same. It's, a, it's kind of like an unwritten rule. You give an air and then you're kind of, almost like you're released. And that is what she did. So she had a few of hers. Um, and one was with the Prince Regent, so why not? Now if you watch the uh, ITV dramatisation in Victoria, you will certainly know who Lord Melbourne is. Well, Lord Melbourne is the son of Lady M. So there you go, fact of the day for you. Lady M was a really strong woman. She was very street smart, she was highly intellectual. Um, when leaders of like the Whig party wanted an audience with the prince, they would have to come through her um, in order to get on the right side. She used her feminine charm and her sexuality in order to get what she wanted out of life and she achieved it. She was fascinating. So there we have my three history book reviews. Hopefully one of these books have taken your fancy. If so, in the comment section, please let me know which one. So that's it for this video. Take care and I shall see you soon for the next one. Bye for now.